So throughout this week, we talked about uh, the computer architecture and how the various chips uh, are synthesized into uh, a single overall architecture. And in project five, you actually have to build this architecture and test it using our project materials. So the purpose of this unit is to give you all sorts of tips and advice on how to do it. Well, before we get started, I want to begin with some overall broad uh, uh, overview of what we have done uh, so far or what we are doing in the course uh, uh, in general. Well, we are building a computer and the computer is implemented as a very high level chip and this chip makes use of two main components, a CPU and uh, a memory unit. The memory in turn consists of several uh, RAM units which are uh, pieced together and every one of these RAM units uh, is basically uh, a collection of many registers. The CPU also uh, includes uh, several registers. If you recall, the D register, the A register. It also uh, includes a program counter and, of course, the ALU that we built in project two. We can continue to uh, resolve uh, uh, these uh, chip parts into uh, uh, simpler or more basic chip parts, for example, the program counter makes use of a register and an adder, and the ALU also uh, uh, makes use of another uh, uh, instance of an adder chip. And of course, all these chips uh, uh, at the end of the story uh, are based on elementary logic gates, uh, those that you built uh, in the first week of the course. And also, uh, uh, other chips, higher level chips, make direct use uh, every once in a while of these uh, uh, lower level gates. Now, if we look at what I've just uh, described uh, bottom up, then uh, in project one we built the elementary logic gates, in project two we built a family of adders that led up to the ALU, in project three we built uh, a family of registers that uh, uh, ended up with uh, uh, RAM units, and uh, finally in this project we are going to take uh, the fruits of all the, this uh, hard work and put it together into a complete uh, computer system. So basically we have to implement uh, the CPU, the memory unit, and then we have to implement uh, uh, the synthesis of these two high level chips into a complete uh, working general purpose computer. So that's what we'll do in project five. So here is the abstraction of the heck computer and here is also the implementation that we discussed in the previous units. And we see that uh, uh, the architecture is based on a CPU, uh, a data memory unit, and uh, an instruction uh, memory unit, which we call the ROM. So let us begin with the CPU. Once again, uh, here is the CPU in, uh, in abstract terms. We see, uh, we see here the API or uh, uh, the input and output units uh, of the CPU. And if we delve into the implementation, we get this uh, diagram that we uh, discussed earlier in the course. And here are some tips on how to build this uh, uh, relatively complex uh, chip. Well, first of all, if you look carefully, you will see that all the chip parts here are chips that we've built before in previous projects. So it's just a matter of taking these chips uh, off the shelf, so to speak, and piecing them together in some uh, uh, clever way. So how do you do it? Well, uh, uh, another inspection of this uh, diagram reveals that we have all these uh, C control bits that uh, you see here. And most of these control bits come from the current instruction. So here's, for example, uh, 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 a C instruction that consists, if you recall, of several fields, and I used color, which is obviously is, is meaningless for the computer, but it helps me communicate with you. Uh, so uh, uh, we see an instruction coming in, and your job as uh, the designer of this chip is to unpack these uh, uh, control bits and send them or route them using HDL to their correct destinations in the various chip parts that make the overall architecture. So if you do this carefully, if you figure out which control bit has to go where, you will basically glue 
all these uh, uh, parts together in a logical way and, uh, and at the end of this uh, 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 synthesis you will get an overall uh, CPU architecture. Now actually I, I really uh, glossed over uh, uh, quite a few details because it's not just a matter of taking these control bits and sending them to some destinations. You may have to add some logic that uh, uh, does some processing of some of these control bits in order to achieve the desired effect. And also uh, bear in mind that there are also some control bits that come out of the ALU. If you look at the diagram, I actually forgot to uh, uh, circle them as well. These control bits also play an important role in, uh, in the overall architecture. And once again, you have to write some HDL logic that takes these control bits, combines them with some other information that comes from the instruction, and, uh, and piece them together in a way that achieves uh, the desired effect. Now, we have intentionally, uh, uh, we haven't uh, uh, given you exact instructions on how to do it, and intentionally, we just used this uh, catch-all uh, C label because we, we want you to think about it and figure out yourself how to put all these things together. Once you do it, you will achieve the overall uh, architecture of the CPU. Uh, here is also the stub file that we are giving you. Uh, the stub file contains you know, the documentation of the CPU, the names of the input and output units, and then uh, obviously you have to provide the, uh, the missing implementation. All right, so moving along, we have uh, resolved uh, the CPU, and the next thing that I want to discuss is the memory unit, the data memory unit, which is uh, 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 the, the unit that contains the, the running program and the data that the program uh, uh, generates, the variables, and in a higher level language, uh, objects, uh, arrays, and so on and so forth. All right, so this is the uh, uh, memory abstraction. It's a, a single uh, address space that has uh, uh, an in and address inputs and an out output, and it also has this nice side effect of refreshing a screen and uh, probing uh, what the user is, uh, is doing with the keyboard. Now, uh, the overall address space of, uh, of the hack uh, memory consists of three logical segments. You know, there's no physical uh, separation, but there's a logical uh, uh, separation, if you will. So the first uh, 16K of the memory are dedicated to uh, uh, the running program and, and the data that it generates. Uh, the next uh, 8K of the memory are dedicated to a screen memory map. And the last register in the memory is, uh, represents the keyboard uh, memory map. So how do we build it? Well, uh, uh, we have to realize this abstraction using chips that uh, we already built before. And here is uh, uh, some high level diagram of this uh, architecture. So we have three basic chips. We have the RAM uh, chip that we built in project three. Then we have a built in uh, uh, screen chip, which essentially is just a regular memory chip. So it's not really terribly interesting to implement it if you implemented the RAM before, but it has the very nice side effect of refreshing uh, the physical screen. And finally, we have uh, a humble register called a keyboard, which uh, holds the currently pressed, uh, uh, the scan code of the currently pressed uh, key. So you have to write HDL code that takes an incoming uh, address, whatever this address may be, and funnel this address to the right chip part within the, uh, the overall address space. So if the address is below 16K, well, there's nothing to do with it. You simply retrieve uh, the right register from the RAM uh, chip part. But if the address is between 16384 and 24575, then you have to do something to take this address and, and route it uh, uh, to the right address in the screen uh, uh, memory chip. And finally, if the address is uh, 24576, then uh, uh, you want to route it to the, uh, to the keyboard uh, memory map. So that's basically what your HDL code has to do. And if you will do it, you will achieve this uh, uh, glue that holds together 
uh, these chip parts and delivers the overall functionality of the data memory. All right, so uh, we've resolved uh, the CPU and the memory, and the only thing that remains to do is uh, to figure out how to implement uh, the ROM. Well, uh, the ROM is really uh, a simpler version of the RAM. It's, it's just, it's, it's a RAM chip, and uh, uh, yet it's, it's a read-only device, so it's actually easier to build uh, than a RAM chip, and therefore we decided not to bother uh, with, uh, with asking you to build it, and we supply it as a built-in chip. Uh, we didn't do it only for that reason, we also we, we, we supply a built-in version of the ROM because we also uh, endowed, endowed this uh, uh, built-in chip with the ability to load the program uh, within the, uh, uh, the hardware simulator. So uh, it's very convenient that we have this built-in chip and all you have to do is take it and plug it into uh, the overall architecture. So uh, this is probably the easiest thing to do in this project. So that's it. We, uh, we built all the, uh, uh, the three components that make up the architecture and the only thing that remains is to uh, actually affect in HDL the very diagram that you see here in front of you. So you have to write a few HDL statements that connect the CPU to the memory and to the uh, ROM 32K in the same way that you see here uh, in the diagram. Uh, how do we do it? Well, we start with a, a stub file that gives you the API of the computer, and then you write a few lines of uh, HDL code that uh, uh, basically uh, um, implement this diagram in HDL. Uh, in order to do this project, as usual, you have to go to the website, uh, read uh, uh, the project page that gives you all sorts of doc documentation about the files that you're going to need, all these files are already available on your computer as part of the Nantu Tetris uh, 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 folder. So uh, you're all set and you have everything you need in order to uh, finally uh, uh, complete the computer architecture. There are a few more resources, as usual, that you are, you're welcome to use. And that's it. Uh, if you do that, uh, you will end up uh, having a running computer. And, uh, and this will be uh, the end of the hardware part of this course. The next unit, as usual, is perspectives.